day. It doesn't seem like we still have very much confidence or conviction. The volumes are still low. Still, our market looks pretty resilient when you looked at some of the losses we saw around the region. I mean, given that we saw the Australian market hitting a 16-month high yesterday, we have seen a bit of a pullback. I guess the most disappointing thing about the market at the moment are still the volumes. We're seeing China coming back from its break. Uh, Japan had the holiday on Monday, but it's, of course, back and trading. And school holidays over here in Australia. And yet we're still seeing just $3.4 billion worth of stock being traded. It's the middle of the week. Typically around this time, we'd be happy with about $5 billion being traded. So extremely light what volumes going through the market today. Having said that the performance of the Australian market hasn't been too bad, down by 0.3% today. Part of it was uh, the swings that we've seen in Shanghai today. It was uh, down for most of the session, but we're actually seeing the Shanghai Composite up by 0.1% at the moment. So the Australian market just looks like it's received some of that nev negative sentiment which was around on Wall Street overnight with the S&P 500 down by 1%. It was the discretionary and the tech sector which really led the losses there. And we saw a similar type of thing on the Australian share market. Market. The iron ore space, very interesting, a jump of 6%, as John mentioned, overnight and up 12% for the week. But we didn't see those iron ore miners really participating in that rally that was seen in spot prices. BHP, Rio Tinto looking relatively flat today. And Fortescue actually down by 2.8%, so that was a bit disappointing. On the flip side, though, we saw quite a bit of strength in the healthcare space. Cochlear, which recently uh, celebrated its 30th anniversary, continues to gain ground, up by 1%. And a smaller biotech company also doing extremely well today, and that's QRX Pharma. Now, this stock jumping by 11.1% on the back of a deal that it's managed to ink with Paladin Lab, and this is around its MOX duo, um, duo drug. So altogether, it looks like the healthcare space was one of the most exciting places to be, but unfortunately, overall, the market pretty quiet today. We had Transurban out with some numbers. Can you talk us through these? We did see the September numbers out for Transurban and I guess the good news is that we saw a rise in revenue up by 1.3% for the three months up to September and we did see growth across the uh, portfolio for Transurban with the one exception of the M2 which we know is undergoing a, going an upgrade at the moment. But I guess these numbers really don't reflect the troubles that Transurban has recently had in Melbourne where we have seen some computer glitches and a couple of te uh, tunnels being shut down for the day. So those numbers will be reflected in the current quarter quarter but altogether this is a bit of a transitional year for Transurban it does have a new management team in place there's an upgrade to the M2 happening but altogether uh, no huge surprises here I think the market's going to be watching uh, the current quarters uh, numbers with interest when they come out but the stock actually down by 1.3 percent today to ask you about earnings season in the States we saw it kick off last night with Alcoa and I'm just looking at uh, at uh, its Australian peer which is currently up about two ten or two percent actually now we often don't see this flow through so uh, this was good to see that was good to see. We did see Alcoa kicking off third quarter earnings season over in the U.S. And as you come in above expectations, three cents per share, the market was expecting to see a, a zero result there. Um, but we did see Al Alcoa shares rising by half a percent after hours. Now, Lumina shares were all over the place today. They were down at one point, up at one point. So it's good to see the shares finishing in positive territory at the end of the day. And if we have a look at Lumina's relationship to Alcoa, they're both joint ventures in the AWEC venture where uh, our Illumina owns a 40% stake. If we have a look at AWAC, this is an ungeared enterprise, but if we have a look at Illumina, it's geared very moderately at 11%, while our COA's gearing levels are at about 60%. I guess in terms of this result, we see no dividend flow through to uh, Illumina, so that's negative there. We've also seen the demand forecast for aluminium being cut from 7% down to 6%, but the fact that we have seen the result coming in ahead of expectations and a pretty solid result given the very difficult backdrop we just saw aluminium prices reaching a 34 month low back in August and of course those type of prices are unsustainable so a very difficult environment but coming in ahead of expectations and it does look like this time around we did see Illumina shares are really participating in the upside and up by 2% which is great news because over the last year we have seen Illumina shares down by 46% that's compared to our COA shares which have only dropped 10% in New York or if we have a look at the uh, depository receipts which trade over here uh, down by 19%. So certainly Illumina has been underperforming the Alcoa shares.